Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on Dark Sack. Today we're going to be taking a look at the OSINT room on Trihackney. This is a little bit of an older room on the site, but it's a very, very cool challenge. I think this originally came out of uh, Hackback 1, I want to say, which was a competition that the site did for uh, UK-based universities, and we might see that come back at some point. However, this room poses us with a challenge of putting our OSINT skills to the test. What information could you possibly get with just one photo? So we're given one photo, which we can download, and we're meant to find seven different pieces of information about this person, including, it looks like their password, which is not great. We shouldn't be able to find that using one photo. Uh, otherwise, let's go ahead and dive right in, and we'll see what we can get. So you'll want to start by joining this room, and then you'll go ahead and click this download button. You will go through and download, it looks like a Windows XP background, and you can take a look at what we've got right here. And sure enough, this is our beautiful Windows XP background. And if you remember this from a computer, uh, from your computer background, you are either a hipster or you've lived through the dark ages. Uh, <laughs> but um, at first glance, this is just a background. And if you haven't done any OSINT or haven't done any image analysis, this might be a little bit confusing. And you might wonder where to go next, or where to go next with just an image. However, we can actually dive into our terminal and start finding some metadata about this image and perhaps who actually created it. In this case, I've gone ahead and already run the command exif tool on this image. Exif tool is a tool that goes through and will strip out um, data about the image, including image width, image height. Um, and in this case, we can actually see a copyright. The copyright that we're given here is, it looks like a username and we can use that to it's sort of a springboard to find more information. And again, that is just the exit tool. If you don't have it installed, I believe you can install that using apt-get install exif tool. Otherwise, it's on GitHub. All right, so we have a username. Let's go ahead. We will copy this. And our first question is, what is this user's avatar of? So if we go over to Google and we search for that username, we can see that we have um, my write up on this. Uh, but we can see we have a number of interesting hints or hits rather. Uh, when this first came out, these were actually quite a bit harder to find. Um, <laughs> good old uh, search engine optimization is making them a little bit easier to get to. Uh, but we can see we have a blog here with an interesting string there, a uh, Twitter profile and then a GitHub profile. Let's take a look at that blog and see what we have to work with. So jumping over to this blog, we can see that we have an author name of O. Wood Flint uh, with one message that says he's in New York right now. So we have, I think, one question on here. Uh, where's he gone on holiday? So guessing that it fits this structure, it looks like he's gone to New York on holiday. Already something you don't want people to know because if you post that you're going to a place online, people can go and break into your house while you're gone. That's a big issue. Uh, let's go back and see if there's anything else we can possibly get. So we did see an interesting string on this website, but it doesn't appear to come up on the main page. Let's take a look at the source code for this website and see if maybe he's hidden something where he shouldn't be hiding things. So jumping into the source code, don't get overwhelmed here. This is a lot to look at. However, you can see that most of it is just search engine optimization. Uh, it looks like we have Google Analytics and some other things right there. Some basic WordPress things. And if we scroll down, eventually we can find, I think it was Penny, and actually here we go. It's on the bottom of my screen. We can see that we have a string here that is in all white to match the background, uh, which is Penny Dropper. That is a very distinctive string. And what do you want to bet this is probably a password? So if we take this, we can go back to the room. And sure enough, we've got the sixth and seventh questions first. But that was their password hidden in white text on their blog, which is publicly facing. And as we saw, Google found that password. Not a great place to find it. Uh, let's go ahead and jump over into the second link here, the Twitter account, and see what we can find. So we have a very, first off, uh, a very interesting username. Uh, o. Wood Flint um, with 0x and then a bunch of zeros. I like taking photos and open source projects. So the second bit is interesting. Taking photos, I would assume this has to do with the uh, WordPress blog that we've already found. However, the open source project hints at uh, 
that other GitHub link that we found is very likely his GitHub profile because that's commonly where people will go through and actually contribute to open source projects. So we looks like we have his avatar here that it looks like a picture of a cat, uh, which means that he's a cat person. Great choice. Uh, it also means that he may have a pet cat. His pet cat may actually be named Penny or something like that. Uh, anyways, we can use that to potentially get more information about this guy. Uh, what city is this person in? And it looks like we want the SSID as well. So it looks like he has a BSSID, which is a broadcast SSID, that uh, is going to allow us to actually find potentially where he's at because it looks like he can get free Wi-Fi from his house. Let's see. So we can go back. Let's take this and we'll click into this and we're probably going to see a bunch of try hack me comments because <laughs> this room has been out for a little while. Uh, but if we take that, we can actually jump over to the site, a site called Wiggle. Uh, if you're not familiar with Wiggle, this is a war driving site. Uh, war driving, what is that? So war driving is where people will drive around with their phones or other similar apparatuses and they will just scan for Wi-Fi names. It's just something that people do. Um, if you are interested further into this, you're welcome to look into it. Just go to wiggle.net and they also have an Android app and probably an iOS app as well. Uh, you could drive around and it just scouts out Wi-Fi names and things like that. Um, sometimes this is considered a gray area. But either way, we have the information here, and it's just meant to observe all of the Wi-Fi hotspots that we've seen. Uh, and in this specific case, we can actually use it. We'll zoom in just a little bit. Uh, sorry, I can't make the website a little bit bigger. Let's see. So if I make it a little bit bigger, you can see here on the right-hand side, we have a spot that we can actually search for a BSSID. So we had that BSSID that we were searching for. We can paste that in here and then hit filter, and it's going to give us essentially a clean map where depending on where you're at on this map you might have to scroll around to find this however after scrolling around for a little bit we can see we're left with one hit marker and in this case it looks like it is over london which first we can go ahead and jump back and it looks like he lives in london judging by he said that he can get free wi-fi from his house uh, let's go back and see if we can find that ssid though which is the actual name of the wi-fi that he's connecting to we can do that by just zooming in a bunch. Might take a moment. Wiggle's website can be a little slow at times. However, we can guess. Uh, so this is already very dangerous because we can see that we have the SSID or the BSSSID, which gives us the general proximity of where he lives, especially because he can get this from his house. That's dangerous because we know that he lives in this area and that's not something you want random strangers on the internet to know. So it looks like we have our BSSID, if I can zoom in, and it is going to be Unilever Wi-Fi. And we can type that in, Unilever Wi-Fi, and there we go. And it looks like we're left with two more questions, uh, which are also very dangerous, especially considering we have their password. Uh, what is his personal email address, and which site did you find his email address on? So in order to find this, we're actually going to return back to Google and see if we can dig into that one last link that we had found, potentially giving us a little bit more information. So if we go back to Google, we can see that we have a hit for github.com, which uh, it looks like he has a different username on there with a one instead of an I, and then he has a project called people underscore finder, which is very ironic considering that we're finding him. If we jump into that link, we can see that we have, sure enough, it links back to his Twitter profile, uh, his project, and we can see that it looks like he has his personal email address here, owoodflint at gmail.com, which very dangerous considering that we have his password and likely can log in, or this might be an older password and he might have incremented by one. Still, we can probably find it. And then we can answer our last question here. Where did you find his email address on? And that is going to be github.com. Otherwise, that is going to do it for the OSINT room. If you have any questions on this, I've linked the Try Hack Me official Discord below in the video description. Otherwise, I also have the DarkSec Discord linked, and you're welcome to join that and ask questions. If you enjoy this content or are looking for more of it, feel free to subscribe to me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.